I just want to tell you that you are very valuable and you are very unique. And that's the one thing I want to tell you. Find your true value and, and actually heal your broken heart. Find back to who you truly are. Hi and welcome to this uh, teaching today and today I'm going to continue to talk about a subject that is maybe not so uh, popular in a way uh, but it's a very important subject and also my focus on this subject is not to give you more condemnation it's not to point um, a finger at you and tell you that you are a big sinner and you need to repent and, and so on uh, uh, it, it's not my focus um, but uh, I'm, I'm, my focus still is on sin and that there is an enemy uh, you have an enemy and uh, there is an enemy called sin and I believe that that there is an uh, that we have an enemy and the enemy uh, that we have is actually called sin and it's uh, I started the last uh, last time to talk about that uh, sin is a power uh, it's not something only you do but it's actually a power something that will try to influence you We'll try to get into your mind and uh, so you're thinking wrong so we have a stinking thinking <laughs> so you're thinking in a wrong way uh, and when you're thinking in the wrong way you will start to do the wrong thing uh, so uh, uh, so there is a force that's called sin and he wants to influence your, your way of thinking uh, so it's important to take uh, captive every thought <laughs> that we know is not from God we need to know the truth truth about who God is and who you are and that's my focus on my teaching you can find my teaching on good news for broken hearts uh, and, uh, and the, the, the teaching that I have for you and my focus on this teaching is this that find find out first of all who God is but you also need to find the second one is very important to find out who you truly are and uh, last time I was also talking about that you are not sin it's very important that we not don't personalize sin as us as something that is us or a part of our identity or that there is a part of our, that we have two identities that we have one identity that is sin and another identity that is uh, cow and that's, a, that's a kind of good uh, and that that's that's the view many people have that on the one side you are evil and, and part of you are evil a half part of you <laughs> are evil kind of and the half other other half is good uh, and that is it's not good news the truth about you is that you become a new creation when, when you became a Christian or received Jesus and even even when Jesus died on a cross uh, he made it possible for all of us to become a new creation and he, he did that once and for all he did something with the power of sin once and for all it happened once and for all that Jesus took the punishment for sin and the, the, he broke the, the, the power of sin uh, so that sin you don't need, need, need to be slave to sin any longer and that's the good news uh, you know I, I want to share the good news and the part of my uh, I, I, I'm, I'm both on the internet um, and also here working outside in uh, out in uh, in northern Thailand and uh, the heading for the ministry is actually good news good news for the broken heart and also I, I have another ministry called good news for the Shan uh, so uh, the, kind of the heading for uh, my ministry is this this that there is good news good news for you and I believe that uh, that Jesus is the good news and he is good news when it comes to sin too because he overcame sin but for you to be able to live in that victory that Jesus already have uh, paid for you that Jesus already have, have made it possible for you to live in you need to see the truth the battle is up here you need to see what's the truth and one of the truth you need to see that there is a power called sin and you also need to you need to know that you are not struggling with yourself you're not fighting with yourself there is another power that wants to control your life that wants to take uh, control uh, but you have power over it you don't have to let it rule your life and you have an enemy there is an enemy the Bible is very clear uh, in even in the New Testament that we still have after Jesus died and some some, some people believe that everything is like kind of yeah when it was finished was finished we don't have a struggle against the devil or sin anymore any longer no that's that's not true and uh, that's that's not uh, the Bible because even even Paul was talking about uh, in Ephesians he is talking about uh, we are you have a fight uh, so uh, so it's very clear that we have a fight and you need to see that 
And the battle is, is not about, you need to remember this, the battle is not against yourself. And it's not against other people either. It's very clear from the Bible. I, I showed you, I think I showed you the Gal Galatians 2, or not Galatians, but Romans 7, where it said it's, uh, where Paul is talking about, it's not me that do, that do it, but sin that, the sin that dwells in me. And sin can dwell in you in a way, in your thoughts, and so on. Or, and, I, and I also believe that actually Paul is talking about when, when you are under law or live under law, or kind of, kind of an outside Christ in a way. And, and then still, sin still dwells in you. But sin is still not you. <laughs> And it's, it's here also, it's, it's talking about in Ephesians 6, uh, 12 to 13, it says that um, For we do not wrestle, wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the world's rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual weakness in high places. Therefore take, uh, t therefore take to yourself the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all this, to stand. Uh, actually, in, in the different uh, translation, it says this thing differently. In my Norwegian says, uh, in Norwegian Bible, it says that you that after uh, take on the, the armor of God, so you can, so you will be, so you will uh, be standing <laughs> uh, after winning victory in all things. Winning victory all, in all things. It's possible, it says here, that it's possible to have victory in all things. But they're also talking about putting on our armor. And if you're putting on an armor, you are in a battle. <laughs> you don't put on an armor if you don't, are not in a battle. So yes, we are still in a battle. There's still a battle against sin. But to get battle again, remember this, the battle is not against you. It, it says here, black and white. <laughs> we, it says there, black and white, that our, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood is that you. You know, I have flesh and blood. This is flesh and I have blood, blood too. Uh, and it says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So we don't wrestle ourselves and we don't wrestle other people, but there is spiritual powers behind. And we need to know this. It's so important that we know it. That it yes, it, it, it is a battle. And we, you need to know it's a bat battle. And also if you were sin or other people were sin, you were fighting against other people and yourself. But yourself and other people is not your enemy. But it's a spiritual power called sin. And that's our true, Eden, the true enemy. Your true enemy is not yourself; it's not other people, and and this is this is what we ha have been reading here, in black and white in Ephesians. You are not wrestling against flesh and blood, and it also says that we can overcome everything, all things. I, I hope that you're starting to understand that it is good news. What I'm telling you about this subject is good news. I'm, I'm trying to to tell you that it, that there is good news when it comes to sin. That there is a power called sin that is not you, and Jesus overcome that power on the cross. So you don't have to be afraid of yourself any, more, any longer. I was one of them. I was one that was afraid of myself, because I was thinking that maybe I was the thing, the bad things I was doing, or the bad things I was thinking. Sometimes I was, I mean, you know, sometimes you have more bad thoughts than you're doing, you know. You have something called self-control too, and, and you can control more your actions than your thoughts in a way, or it's easier to control your, your action in a way than, than your thoughts. Uh, but some people, they, they follow their, their, their thoughts too. And, and you know, sin also, it, it kind of birth in your mind, in your thoughts. So it's, it need to, need, you need to take your thoughts into captivity. The Bible is talking about that too, that we need to take thoughts into captivity when they are coming. But don't identify with those thoughts. Don't think that you are those thoughts. You are not sin. Don't identify yourself with these thoughts because the thoughts is not who you truly are. It's not your true identity. And that's the thing I'm after. Don't believe in the lies about who you are. See who you truly are. You are a son, you are a daughter of God, first of all, and, and you are created in His image. You need to see that. That's, that's who you are. 
and then the, your identity is not the thing you are doing or sometimes and, or the things that you are thinking sometimes that is not true, truly who you are you need to find back to your true identity and you need to go back go go further back than the, than the than, than the fall too you need to go to back to how god created us and when god created you he said that you are very good your original identity is not sin and that's very important that, that you see that your original identity is not sin and uh, many people have heard this that the that um, uh, the, the people they are just evil all through they have a wicked heart heart all people have a wicked ha heart and and, uh, and and they are evil and and so on and then that's their or original identity but you need to go further back than the fall <laughs> because yes sin sin came in and it, it formed it, it formed the identity of man in many ways but it's not our true identity sin is not our true identity we need to get back to that you need to find back to that because there's so many people who don't see that there's freedom in that if you don't see that you, you will not find the freedom that God has called you to you need to see that you need to see the to your true identity that your true identity is not sin and don't listen to those people who say that you are your evil whole, whole you have a wicked heart uh, especially when you have received Jesus you don't have a wicked heart any longer because God changed your heart he, he, he took out the stone heart and put in a flesh heart he, your heart is not evil anymore it's new it's righteous you're pure that's how your heart the condition of your heart right now yes it was it before the fall or now not before the fall but, but before the cross that was the situation so Jesus had to Jesus had to come and he had to do something God had to do something about the wicked heart <laughs> and he did something about the wicked heart he did something about the stone heart he took it out <laughs> and he put it put it in a, in a living heart instead he gave us a new spirit he put a new spirit in you and that's the truth about you and also as I said last time your soul and body is not evil either but it's, it can have been program, programmed and you're, you can use your body as an instrument of on, uh, on righteousness uh, in Colossians in Colossians is talking about that for he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood the remissions of sin or forgiveness of sin you can also say so he delivered you from the the power of darkness and he has already translated you into the kingdom of his dear son so your your uh, your condition before and position before was that you were under the the power of darkness and the power of sin which is a part of, of, uh, of the, 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 the power of darkness sin is a part of the, the power of darkness darkness and we were all in that when we, we were in this, that condition we were sinners we were called sinners but the, the condition that we are in now and our position too that we are, have been put into a new kingdom it says here we are not in that old kingdom anymore we are in, not in the dark the kingdom of darkness anymore we are in a new kingdom the kingdom of his dear son we are in the kingdom of light we have we have changed kingdom and this this old uh, kingdom has no longer power over us it doesn't have any power over you anymore and you are forgiven for your sins also you are being, being righteous this is your position this is your uh, how you are right now and there's a lot of things I could have said of this and I said of this and I, I even have another teaching about this that you are not in the kingdom of what uh, yeah, you're not in the kingdom of darkness but the kingdom of light I have a, a teaching about Colossians and there's a lot of things I could have said about Colossians and I like Colossians and in this scripture uh, because um, it, it's really a contrast we were in the darkness but now we are in the light but the enemy wants to tell you that you are still in the darkness you're still in that kingdom that you still belong to sin if you are a sinner you belong to sin 
If you are righteous, you belong to the righteous one, which is Christ. I hope you see this. A sinner belongs to sin. A righteous belongs to the righteous. And you are righteous. If you believe in, in, in Jesus Christ, you are righteous. And received Him, you are righteous. That's 100% sure. You are in the kingdom of light. And you have the forgiveness of sin. And there's a lot of things I could have said about that too, you know, about sin. About the forgiveness of sin. I have another series. And, and go back to my website, uh, Good News for Broken Hearts. Uh, and you can find for some uh, before Christmas or uh, in 2017, uh, I had a series about that, that uh, the forgiveness of sin. Uh, so go back and, and find that teaching um, because I'm not going to repeat myself. But, but what I'm saying is actually, actually not, not only me, but, but read, read, read your Bible because it says that God has already forgiven us. In the same way God has forgiven us, forgive other people, for instance. Paul is saying. So, uh, uh, but remember today, I, I just wanted to, uh, to really tell you, remember that who your true enemy is. That your true enemy is not you. It's a, a power called sin and it's not you. And remember this too, that you are highly loved by God. And if you were sin, God could have not loved you. God cannot, cannot love sin. If you just only, if your identity is sin, and even the non-Christian, he doesn't see, God doesn't see them for their condition in a way. He sees them how he created them. He created them in his image. And he wants to, to lead them back so they can find back to their true image, back to, the, to their true identity. And you can only find back to your true identity to true Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can find back to your father's house. It's the only way you can find back to who you truly are is through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. He's the only way to God and he's the only way to find out who you are truly are too. You can, cannot. You can try to, to figure out but who you truly are, but you cannot. You need to know the creator to know how you are created. You really not need to know the Creator before you can know how you are created. Your true identity comes when you start to know who God is. Because God has been a part of you, you are a part of God, and when you study about who God is, His nature, you will actually start to find out who you truly are. For His nature has become your nature now. I hope you see this. And just in the end, this is, this is not a long, long uh, teaching I have for you today. I have one more, one more part of this teaching. And I just want to, to tell you uh, a little bit about what, what you call uh, desire and lust. <laughs> I want to t say something about that uh, in the next part of this teaching. So it, it will be one more teaching and it will be a short one. Uh, but uh, but I, I, I just wanted to, to have, that, have our, our own teaching on that. Uh, but, but in the end too, I uh, just want to remind you about this, that, that you, are, you don't have two identities, as I, I believe that I have. I just want to repeat that, because there are so many people who believe that, and I, I was one of them. And I struggled, I struggled for many, many years. I struggled with myself, I struggled, struggled to accept myself. Because I, it seems like the old part of me, or the, the old part, or the bad part of me, it seemed that, like it was winning all the time. <laughs> it, 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 I, I tried to crucify it, craft, crucif crucify it, but I was not able to. I all the time tried to put it to death, <laughs> but I was not able to. But you know, the good news is that you have been crucified with Christ already. You don't have to strive and try to crucify yourself anymore. You just need to see it. You are crucified with Christ. And then you see that. Sin has no dominion over you. Romans 6 talking about that. Count yourself to dead to sin. So that sin will no, not, no longer have, have power over you. That's, that's, that's Paul is, is saying. And you need to see yourself 
as dead to sin. As the, 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 the person that the righteous person that person that you know are. You don't have a split personality. <laughs> You're not a schizophrenic person. You are one person. And God created you. Yes, He created you with, with, uh, with a soul, spirit and body. And when you become a, a, a believer, uh, you get a new spirit. You, you get born again. And but but your your soul and your body is still the same, but now now that you have the spirit and you're bit one with Christ in His spirit, one with, with one spirit with Him. Now you can start to renew your mind, so you can be more and more like Him in your way of thinking too. And when you become more like Him in your thinking, you will start to do the right thing too. Your body is just an instrument. It's just a temple. It's a temple for the Holy Spirit, and it's, it's, it is an instrument. And you can use it for the instrument of unrighteousness or for righteousness. But if you start to understand who you are, renewing your mind about who you are, uh, you, uh, and, and study the character of God, because character, the character of God is, is a part of you now, you will become more and more like it. Your thought will, your your way of thinking will be more, more and more like him, and your action and and your mouth will, will speak the right words, and so on. And this is a process, maybe maybe until we, we you know we, we come to heaven, or get to heaven. And I, it is, I'm quite sure it is. Um, it's still a process, and we still live in a living in a wor world where the enemy is talking to us all the time. Through media, to through internet, to Facebook, through TV, uh, and through uh, Netflix or whatever uh, you are watching at, the enemy is speaking to you all the time. Anyway, he's trying to give you fear. He want to try to give you the wrong thoughts. He want to want you to to not see who you are. And even in churches, uh, he speaks through people. <laughs> you hear the wrong message. You, you, you hear the message that you are not, you're just a sinner, uh, you, you, you're, you, you, don't, you, you not amount to anything, uh, you just have to hope that you will get to heaven one day, and so on. So the enemy wants to talk to you in many different ways, ways even through Christians, and even through religion, and even in churches, <laughs> you can find it. But you need to know who you are, and that's the thing that you need, just need to know. Study about who you are. If you know that you are righteous, if you, if you know that you know, you will see that you will grow more and more. And even if you fall, even if you should fall into a sin, <laughs> Jesus is there to help you. And First John is talking about it. First John two two. And uh, I, I'm writing to you to this, so you should not sin. But it said that if you should sin, God is still there. The righteous one is still there, and He will help you. And he has forgiven you, and he, he will help you still. He's still there. So yeah, yes, true, true life. You will, you will, uh, you you will still fall, even though even though you are not a sinner. You can still choose to sin. You have a, have a choice to sin, and you can still uh, use your your body as an instrument of sin. And it's very clear from the Bible, from 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 Paul also, that you can do that. And, and you, you, you have an enemy, until you, you get to heaven, you have an enemy called sin. And you need to put on the armor of God. Yes, there is a fight. The fight is not over yet, when it comes to sin. But you don't have to be a slave under sin anymore, and that's the good news. You just need to know who you truly are. The more you find out who you are, the more the power of sin has no power over you. And even if you should, should fall into sin, you don't fall into condemnation and, and fall into uh, self-pity and all of those things. Uh, and do the sin again. Or, or yeah, you, you, you know that the God still loves you. And you can still love yourself. Even though you maybe did something wrong, wrong said something wrong. So maybe you said something wrong to your wife or your children. And you re regret, re regret it. Yes, go to, to the prayer. If you said something wrong to your wife, um, please go and, 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 and ask, so ask for, for forgiveness uh, and, and say that you're sorry. That that's a good thing to do still. <laughs> and, uh, and do with other people too. You still, it's very important to do that. But remember who you are still. 
that you don't have to go and uh, go for 14 days or a month or, or even years and feel this guilt and condemnation tearing you down. Sometimes we do, do make uh, wrong decisions, we, we do make things that we, do, we should not do, we do things we should not do, and we have been fooled by the enemy sometimes, and we are following him and his voice sometimes. But take responsibility for what you have done too. Don't, don't, if you have done something wrong, if you have done a sin, don't, don't say the order to the end. The enemy made me do it. <laughs> you know? I'm not talking about that. That was what, what, uh, what Adam did. Don't do that. Take responsibility for, for your sin too. If you have done a sin, take responsibility for you, for it, and do something about it. <laughs> and that's what I had for you uh, today. Uh, but I have one, one small part uh, left in this, uh, this series, kind of. And I, I just wanted to, to say something about lust and desires. And many, many people think <laughs> that lust and desires is evil. Uh, and I'm going to answer that question last time. Is uh, our lust and desires are the, are they evil, or um, or are they from God? <laughs> and I'm going to answer that question next uh, uh, next week or next part of this teaching. Uh, so so please come come back and follow me follow me on goodnewsforbrokenhearts.com. And also, I'm part of a ministry called, uh, we are called it Good News for the Shan, and I'm reaching out to a people group from, uh, from, uh, from Myanmar called the Shan people. And we are working in Northern Thailand uh, and reaching out um, to, uh, to this, this people group. Uh, and we're seeing, seeing many, many things happen uh, uh, lately too. Many people have received Jesus and, and it's actually called an unreached people group, which, which is a people group that haven't really heard about the good news about Jesus uh, and we really want to tell them about the good news about Jesus uh, so uh, uh, but we need uh, yeah as a family I I married to Ashan uh, from Myanmar uh, and we are working here in northern Thailand and we also need some uh, some support to do the things we are doing both on the internet uh, and also uh, yeah also here we are working and, and living in northern Thailand uh, so if you want to uh, support us in any way, feel, feel free to do that. You can also receive our newsletter. Uh, if you go to my website, Good News for Broken Hearts, you can, uh, you can uh, subscribe there. Uh, and you can also subscribe on our uh, yeah, uh, updates too. Uh, so feel free to do that. And you also find a link to, uh, to my uh, PayPal. Uh, so you can, you can actually give uh, uh, support there if you want to, or donation there if you want to so so i just wanted to uh, to yeah to say that in the end and so feel feel free to do that Hi, my name is uh, Tore Hannesen. I'm uh, leading a ministry called uh, Good News for the Shan. And we are actually trying to reach, reach out to the Shan people from Myanmar. And uh, uh, just across on my left side, uh, you can actually see uh, the border to Myanmar. So we're very close to the border. Uh, and we are reaching out to them to try to tell them uh, about uh, the good news, about who God is and, and the love of God also. And we're also trying to help them uh, with, uh, with some education, some basic education. We are teaching them English and Thai and Shan. Actually right now I am in an uh, orange farm uh, and there's a lot of people working, Shan people working in this place. They are coming from Myanmar and coming into Thailand uh, to find a work or find something they can do and try to get money so they can send it back to their families in Myanmar. And there's a lot of uh, people with Difficult, uh, difficulties with papers, difficulties with families. There's a lot of uh, problem with alcohol. And we want to give hope to these people. And we want to share the good news with them. And you can also be a part of that by, by supporting us, by coming out as a short-term term team or to support us in, in any way. So contact us if you are interested in this ministry. 
uh, and interested in to knowing more about this Caldesio.